Fort Nelson, constructed on the crest of Portsdown Hill in the 1860s as part of Lord Palmerston's great plan for the fortification of the United Kingdom. Nearby is Nelson's monument, erected in his memory after his death in the Battle of Trafalgar, which asserted the supremacy of the Royal Navy over our old enemy, France. Looking southwards from the rear of Fort Nelson, we can see the great harbour of Portsmouth, the naval dockyard, and the safe water anchorage of Spithead. Here, the Channel Fleet, our first line of defence, protector of our island, could find a safe haven in time of conflict. This harbour had to be protected, no matter what the cost, and a Royal Commission reporting in 1860 recommended the building of a ring of forts around Portsmouth. Five such forts were constructed on the crest of Portsdown Hill. They were built of local red brick, laid down in English bond. The forts were low in profile, and wherever possible, earth was used to protect its brickwork from the impact of enemy shells. North was the direction from which the enemy was expected to attack. Deep ditches surround the fort on its northern, eastern and western sides. On the southern side, or rear of the fort, the ditch was much shallower, and the brickwork, although lined with flint, was deliberately left weak and unable to withstand a heavy bombardment. Should the fort fall into the hands of an enemy, its recapture could be achieved by attacking it from the rear. A V-shaped structure, called a redan, projects to the rear to provide flanking fire across the southern approaches. Each fort in the line of five, although a totally separate defensive position, could provide flanking fire across the front of its neighbour. This system of mutual aid in fortification was based on the Prussian system of defence, and the forts were known as polygonal forts because of their shape. From the north, an attacking enemy would see very little of the fort, apart from the top of its ramparts, behind which lay the main armament. The dry ditch is 40 feet deep and 50 feet across, its vertical inner wall built of brick and lined with flint. Projecting out into it are buildings called caponios. These are bomb-proof structures in which were mounted guns so positioned that they could fire along the length of the ditch. The gun ports are lined with granite and flanked with rifle loopholes for local defence. In the 1880s, these caponiers were armed with 32-pounder smoothbore breech-loading guns on iron carriages and platforms. All the major branches of the ditch were protected by pairs of these guns, firing case shot. The land to the north of the fort was sculpted so that nothing of the ditches and caponiers could be seen by an attacking force. The enemy could not bring their guns to bear directly upon the brickwork of the fort and so batter it down. Built within the ramparts at Fort Nelson are mortar batteries, so constructed that the guns they contained could not be hit directly by enemy bombardment. Hidden in its bomb-proof casemate, the 13-inch mortar could fire out at a fixed angle of 45 degrees. With plunging fire, it could drop its bombs behind defences that ordinary guns could not penetrate. Behind the parapets of the large D-shaped rampart was the long-range armament of the fort, mounted on concrete and earth emplacements. In the 1880s, Fort Nelson was armed with 7-inch rifled breech loaders, 64-pounder rifled muzzle loaders, and 6.6-inch howitzers. The central parade of the fort was at that time empty of buildings. Cut through the natural chalk of the hill, under the parade are tunnels. These provided a safe route from the barrack rooms at the rear of the fort to the gun positions. The barrack block provided accommodation for the garrison in bomb-proof rooms for 18 to 20 men. 
thoughts on thoughts downhill were to be garrisoned in time of need by men of the volunteer brigade.